What is up YouTube? Today we're coming at you with a video all about jigs, okay? And not just any jig. We're gonna be breaking down mini jigs. So when I think of a mini jig, the first one that comes to my mind is a Strike King Bitsy Bug jig. And this is a Bitsy Bug jig. Okay, pretty small jig, okay? If you are targeting smallmouth bass, you're probably gonna want a micro jig or a mini jig. Okay, so my jig of choice is the Bitsy Bug jig made by Strike King. We also have this other jig here that we're gonna throw. And it's got a different type of skirt on it. It's got a thinner wire hook, but this is also very nice jig, okay? We're gonna talk about these but guys, it's all about the micro jig today. We're gonna to be telling you exactly what you need to know to get out on the water, fish for some smallmouth bass or any type of bass really with a jig. Okay, we're gonna tell you what to throw it on, what type of gear to use, what type of jig to use, and how to fish it. If you have any questions about this, please hit me up in the comment box below. And guys, like always, like and subscribe, turn on that notification bell, and let's get going with this video. All right, so first up, what is a micro jig or a mini jig? It's any jig that is lower profile. It's gonna be like a 3 16 ounce. It's gonna be lighter. The Strike King Pro Model jigs that I throw, they are around 3 8 ounce and up. Okay, so they're a heavy jig. This is not a heavy jig at all. These are little bitty micro jigs. Okay, thinner wire hook there you can see. The other ones have a big thick wire hook. The two colors that I like to throw, and this is to keep it the most simplest possible, okay? Black and blue, green pumpkin. That is the only two that I use. I have found that black and blue is really good for dirty or stained water, and the green pumpkin is good for clear water, okay? Keep it simple, keep it natural, something they can see, Okay, that is the basics of it. Yeah, you can get out and get creative with the other colors. I found the smallmouth don't really care where I'm at. And I found it's more about the presentation, guys. We're also going to talk about how to fish this. And that'll, uh, that's where we'll talk about the presentation some. Okay, but what we have here is a little micro jig. Okay, this is got the vertical line tie. It's just an Arky style head. It's not a swim jig, okay? It's kind of just a casting jig, arky style jig. What I've done here is also trim down this weed guard to make it a little bit shorter. That way the hookup ratio can be a little bit better, okay? If you don't do that, a lot of times you're gonna have a very long weed guard. Let's see, I don't think I've trimmed this one down. Look how long that weed guard is. All right, but I also found that this weed guard is a lot further away from that hook point that's why I left it like that. So uh, you might might need to just feel how it is when you buy them. See how close that hook is to the actual weed guard. That way we can actually trim it down. It's not going to affect this getting hung up. Okay, uh, jigs do tend to get hung up just a little bit. So unlike the Texas rig or throwing the tubes or the Ned rig where we hook it weedless, where we really don't get snagged up at all, these jigs probably will get hooked up just a little bit. So if you're fishing off of a boat, you might have to go retrieve it a few times. Or like me, I'm wade fishing, I'm probably gonna have to walk out if I can access it and actually pick these off of whatever cover they're stuck on. Okay, so uh, what line do you throw this on? Okay, for smallmouth fishing, and I'm fishing pretty clear water, I'm probably gonna stick to around a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader. You could go down to an eight. I do not fish anything lower than eight. Typically nothing lower than a 10. I found with fluorocarbon, guys, it is pretty much invisible when it's in the water and those fish cannot see it, okay, if it's at 10 or 12 pound test. Okay, I'm gonna match that up with probably at least a 20 pound braid. So 20 pound braid ran to a fluorocarbon leader. That's gonna get it done, guys. And that is my preferred setup. Okay, let's break down the rod and reel and what you need to throw it on. All right, so we have two options here. I like to throw it on a bait caster where these are thinner wire hooks and it's a lighter bait. I am gonna be throwing this on my Black Max 
medium power rod. And also, I like a medium rod because for smallmouth fishing, it's gonna keep more of that tension on that line when we're pulling them in. It's got more parabolic bend in the rod, and that's gonna help us keep those fish pinned on that hook and get them into the boat or up to the bank here. Also, I have a medium power spinning rod here. This is an Abu Garcia Vendetta, but this has also got a little bit more backbone than a normal medium power rod. This has got a fast action tip on it. It doesn't give a lot. This is honestly probably borderline medium heavy. And uh, from a lot of manufacturers, this might actually be considered medium heavy. So I think it's on the borderline. Uh, but that's going to give us enough backbone to actually set the hook on this jig and actually get that to penetrate the fish's lip, okay? And uh, this has got 20-pound braid, 10-pound fluorocarbon leader. This is actually just straight 12-pound fluorocarbon, okay? I found that for a lot of jig fishing, I do like straight fluorocarbon. Okay, it's going to keep things simple. A lot of times you end up breaking off and I can just retie real fast. I don't have to worry about tying on a leader and all that, okay? So my preferred method of tying a jig on is gonna be straight to fluorocarbon, okay? And I would probably, honestly, prefer this on a bait caster pretty much all the time. I wanna see how it would do with this, but I believe it's gonna work out pretty well. We're gonna try both of them today, guys, and show you how we do it, okay? Let's get into showing you how to fish a jig. All right, guys, I'm shooting this on my new tripod today. It's got a little bit better of a stand to it, so uh, the base of it's a lot wider. So I can actually put it in this fast-moving current and put it out in the water with me. The other tripod I had was a little bit skinnier. Couldn't do that with. All right, so we're throwing out this Bitsy Bug. We're going to see how this thing performs, guys. Guys, all I'm doing right now is literally just reeling in and dragging up. Okay, we're gonna cast up into the current. We're gonna kind of let the current drift it down, but this jig should have enough weight to it to where we're gonna be in control of dragging it across the bottom, nice and slow. So what I wanna do is, when I cast it out, I'm just gonna drag up to about 11 o'clock, reel down the slack, and repeat guys we're just gonna drag up again 11 o'clock reel it down drag up reel it down and that is the easiest way to do it is just dragging the sand across the bottom guys with this bait going across the bottom it's gonna make all kinds of disturbance in the in the sand it's gonna be bumping across that rock this little metal head here is gonna be clanging across that rock and it's gonna get the attention of the fish guys I promise you it's very subtle but guys, those fish will key in on that. They key in on crayfish going across the bottom. They're going to key in on this. This jig is actually going to mimic a crayfish. That is what we're trying to go for, guys. Natural color here, imitating a crayfish. All right, I'm going to show you what we're looking for with the retrieve. Again, I'm just dragging. The current's taking it, though. Drag up. Reel down, drag up, reel down, dragging up, reel down. And if you feel one, that's when you're setting the hook. So guys, with this one, I have a, a yum crawl as the trailer. I forgot to mention in the intro about trailers. Other one that we have, so we got a Yum Crawl trailer on this one. I've actually cut it down a lot. And the other one that we have is a Strike King Menace Crawl. Okay, so it's a little bit different style. As you can fish this on a spinning reel just fine. The reason I like a bait caster is just because typically I can get a little bit more backbone in the rod and actually set the hook a lot easier. That's not always the case. You can find spinning rods and stuff that have a lot more backbone too. So another retrieve method you can do is where you just pop it across the bottom. Where you're just twitching the rod, you go down, 
and you're just twitching the rod all the way up. What that's gonna do if you have enough tension on the line is it's just gonna bump across the bottom just like that. It's gonna give. All right guys, I forgot to mention in the intro, we have a yum crawl trailer on this one. And what a trailer is, is just a soft plastic that you put on the very end of your jig here. You just kind of work it onto the hook to where it kind of presents more of a larger profile to that bait. Gives it more of a different action too. Holds it down nice and firm against the bottom, gives it a better action. And those little claws are gonna be kicking away. And then on this one, we have a Strike King Menace. Okay, and it's more like a grub style bait kind of a crossover between a crawl and a grub and it's going to give a different type of kick in action okay so that's the two type of trailers we're working with today let's get going okay so with the jig it doesn't matter if you cast up into the stream it doesn't oh crap we have one right here at us it doesn't matter if you cast up into the stream downstream across stream it's all going to work guys because this is mimicking a crayfish they go all different directions guys so it's not like fishing a crankbait or anything like that you can pretty much fish whichever direction you want my preferred retrieve is across the stream I find that going upstream can get a little challenging to keep up because that fish will come straight at you a lot of times uh, once you do get hooked into them. Uh, and then coming upstream is kind of difficult too because a lot of times that just adds to the force that you have to pull against that fish. Like you saw when I pulled in that five and a quarter pounder on that vintage rod, that was difficult very difficult because I had to fight that thing all the way upstream because a lot of times with the jig you'll get a bite as soon as it hits the water sometimes and then other times you might have to drag it off but like if I'm fishing off a boat flipping a jig into cover they're watching that vertical presentation when I drop it down in the water Fishing for these smallmouth, I'm kind of working a horizontal presentation. There we go. That's a decent one too. Yeah, he choked it. The jig right there. All right, guys. Nice little one pounder, probably. On the jig, I showed you that jig works, guys. It will pull them in. Sometimes uh, you got to set the hook a little bit harder with these jigs. All right, so I'm going to fish a little bit more over that area again. Once again, smallmouth like to school up a lot of times. So if we find one, typically you can find some more. There we go. That's a good one. That's a big one right there. He keeps jumping, guys. Hopefully y'all can see that. Downstream. A little bit better. A little bit better right here. All right. Like I said, guys, they school up. You can get more than one. I threw literally back in that same spot. Not a little, a uh, little over a one pounder, I would say. All right, another one on that Bitsy Bug jig. Yeah, look at that dude. Oh yeah, pretty little smallmouth. So guys, I'm just gonna be honest with a jig. With the Texas rig, with the Ned rig, uh, yeah, just about all those. I fish them the same, guys. It's all just throw, drag, reel up the slack, drag, reel up the slack. 
Now, one good thing about me fishing a jig out here, and probably a Ned rig too, that's why I've been catching so many on it, is they never see a Ned rig. They never see a jig. They probably only see those little crappie jigs and stuff that most people throw. They're not out here like really hardcore bass fishing. They don't know exactly what to throw. That's typically what they're gonna be used to seeing, okay? So even though this is a very high pressured area, as I've caught two five pounders out of the same hole. So they're not seeing what I'm throwing. Yeah, so we're bringing out the spinning reel, spinning rod, also throwing one of those green pumpkins, but this one has a little menace uh, trailer on it. We got one and the reel's all jacked. This is a good one too. Oh, we got him hooked all kinds of weird. That one ended up getting off, guys. He was about a one and a half pounder. He's the best one we've had all day, but it was weird. He was stuck in the mouth, but it was wrapped around his body. And I was trying to get it unwrapped and he got off when I had him held up. But that was a nice fish. I'm trying to figure out what was going on with the, uh, the rod here. I think I've got sand down in the reel and it wasn't reeling right. Definitely the best fish we had all day. I wouldn't have been messing around. <laughs> hey, that just goes to show you this medium power spinning rod did the job, guys. It set the hook perfect for that fish. There for a second, guys, the way that thing was fighting, I thought we'd hooked us another five pounder almost. That was a big filling fish. There might be more over here stacked up around these trees, these down trees over here. So we threw that black and, there we go. There we go, that's a good one. Oh, he jumped. There we go. So he's about the same size as that other one that we just caught. All right, definitely, definitely a good smolly. I'd keep this thing. Get this dude back in the water. That is, I think, four on this Strike King Bitsy Bug jig. And they've all been about the same size, so not bad, guys. All right, let's cast back over there. That's two out of that same hole, just like earlier. And guys, if that doesn't prove my point as they school up, I don't know what does. But they definitely do. They pile up, guys. Don't think about it as a large mouth. These smallies are definitely a different breed of fish. All right, guys, I hope you like this video of fishing jigs and in specifically the micro or mini jig as we threw these Bitsy Bug jigs made by Strike King today, that is my favorite mini jig that you can get. And you can pick these up at Walmart, Dick Sporting Goods, Academy, any place like that. They're gonna have their Strike King Bitsy Bug jigs. And if you get them at Walmart, you can buy them in a bulk pack too. So uh, depending on which Walmart you have uh, that carries them, these are awesome. They catch fish, guys, and you saw we pulled in four fish on this same Bitsy Bug jig. And come to find out, I did like the spinning rod combo a lot better than the bait caster. So keep that in mind. I run this with braid and a fluorocarbon leader. And uh, yeah, we had straight fluorocarbon on that other one. This one had a lot more sensitivity. And I think that's what helped me pull in more fish with it. But guys, hopefully you like this video. If you have any questions about how to fish jigs or anything about jigs, hit me up in that comment box and guys, like always, hit that like button, subscribe button, turn on that notification bell, and guys, keep it blue collar, and until next time.